Media's always happy to play football. That uh, we were saying around here, you have to choose between obligation or opportunity every time. And for anything in Edie's life, it's an opportunity. And that kind of contagious positivity bleeds into everything that is our program. In 1999, the Second Liberian Civil War broke out between Liberians United for Reconciliation and Democracy against the Liberian President Charles Taylor and his government-supported troops. In 2003, after thousands of deaths and thousands more being forced to flee their homes, five-year-old Yidi Thanrat immigrated with his grandmother, aunt, uncle, and several cousins to the United States to escape the violence. At that point, you know, people were like, we had family members that got killed. Uh, in a war that got taken, I got cousins that was taking um, child soldiers and stuff like that, uh, who had a fight, and you know, it was just it was just hard times, and the country was going like sideways, you know, uh, war torn country, everybody fighting, everybody killing, and we didn't have uh, as um, the foundation my dad and them built was like ruined during the war, so like he had to start all the way back up, and then we lost contact with him during the war. Um, my 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 birth mother, we lost contact with her. I haven't. I've spoken to her in a, in a while, so um, coming here was like for, for our future. She, she set the foundation like, oh, this is what we're going to do for y'all to come here and be somebody one day. In the United States, Yidi and his family first settled in San Antonio, Texas, before moving to Philadelphia, where nine-year-old Yidi used football to fit into his new environment. I mean, Texas was, was okay. You know, after a while, I got used to it, made friends, you know, uh, the difference, like like the racism stuff, it was it was it was there, but it wasn't really there, you know. But moving to Philadelphia, I got I was in for a rural awakening because the city of Philadelphia is a is, is bad, you know. I ain't never know kids was that mean until I got there. It was really difficult. I got in a bunch of fights, you know, trying to defend myself, trying to defend my little brother, because uh, at that point it was just like Africans versus Black Americans. Even my older siblings, they saw this as different for some reason. I didn't understand, but football was a way for me to build that bond, that relationship with people so I could be like, oh, so they, they don't just see me like, oh, I'm, I'm African, you feel me? It's just a way for me to, it was a way for me to fit in. You know, that's, that's my way to fit in and make things a lot smoother and a lot easier. Football came easily for Yidi, and while playing at Father Judge High School, he got his first scholarship to play at Rutgers. However, after getting a severe ankle injury his senior season, Yidi ended up going to FCS school Tennessee Tech, where the experience didn't turn out to be what he thought it would be. Uh, it was tough, you know, it was moments where I doubted myself, like, yo, I just want to give up. Moment, I just want to quit. You know, my mom just kept praying, like, no, you can't do it. You came too far. You're too talented. You're too good. You just can't do it. You mean, you had all this aligned for you. You worked so hard um, through middle school, high school to be in the position you are. You just can't give up, you know? And I just think about times like that, you feel me? I, uh, I remember like nobody would take me. I sat in the room and I cried and she just helped me. She's like, you're gonna be somebody one day. Just trust yourself, just trust yourself. And now every time I, I go downhill, I just remember that day, you know, it motivates me like, yeah, I came this far, I can do it, so. After talking with Towson head coach Rob Ambrose, Yidi decided to transfer to Towson, allowing him to be closer to his family and those he cared about. And then I was so far from home. My mom's in North Dakota, my girlfriend and my daughter's in, um, in Philadelphia, plus I had a son in a way, and it was just like, it was too tough for me. I'm like, yo, I could barely get him to come to the game, and all I want to see, my daughter, my family, see me play in the stands, you know. I took direction, whereas, oh, Villanova, Delaware, Towson. I took the step, the closest to my school, that's where I was looking for. And, you know, Coach Foreman was here, Coach Ambrose, as soon as, I, as, soon as um, my high school coach called Coach Ambrose, he said, get your release paper, we're going to take you. And I never looked back from then. Even though Towson already had a starting running back, Than Rat worked extremely hard in practice every day with his work ethic and contagious personality rubbing off onto his teammates. Every guy on our team, not just me, every guy on our team would say that Yidi is the consummate team player, that he will legitimately do anything that's asked of him, anything at all, from running someone over to making a tackle to blocking a guy three times bigger than himself to cleaning up trash in the locker room. Anything that makes it better for our team, that's what he wants to do. He's not just a running back, he's a leader in the locker room. He blocks, he's behind off, he tackles on special teams. He does whatever we, whatever we ask of him on his team and uh, that's a very, very special player that you'll want on any team. And in week three, Yidi got his chance to take over the starting role when Shane Simpson went down with a season-ending knee injury. 
Van Rat saw his opportunity and trusted that all the hard work he has put in over the years would finally pay off. I, w I was ready. I, I was ready. Because Coach Formwin, Coach Ambrose, everybody on the staff prepares everybody like a starter. Because you never know when, you're, when, you're, when, you're, when your time is, is, is now. And see him go down was a, it was a hurt to the team. And a lot of people on the team was like, dang, how, how are we going to come back? Dang, how are we going to come back from this? But I showed them to trust me. Like, listen, I do this on special team. Whatever you ask me to do, I'm going to do it the best as I can and as hard as I can. And everything just fell into place. You know, God just, everything just fell into place. And I didn't do nothing special. I just do the plays they tell me to do, hit my key, and then whatever happens, happens. Since taking over as the Tigers' starting running back, Than Rat has rushed for over 700 yards and 14 touchdowns, earning CA first team specialist honors and second team running back honors. Yidi credits all the difficulties and challenges he has overcome as the reason for his success. What I came from, what I've done, is nothing that's harder than that. You know, it's nothing that's gonna be anything in my life. It, it probably gonna come something that compared to it, but it's nothing that's gonna be that hard. Coming, I don't know how many miles from across, going over the ocean to come here and adjusting all this, all the stuff that that I've done, I have been through, shaped me to be the man that I am today. Like the challenges I face, the adversity that I know, like even if it's little problems that I have, I know I'm gonna get through it. I don't, I don't, I don't drain myself. I'm, not, I'm gonna get through it. After traveling from Liberia to San Antonio to Philadelphia to Cookville, Tennessee, and finally Towson, Yidi is set to become the first person in his family to earn a college degree. Yidi knows that his road has been difficult, but knows that everything he has done thus far has shaped him into the person he is today and helped him to pass on the values he has learned onto his children. He would probably tell you that without football he wouldn't be where he is today. That it's one of the things that's helped guide him, it's kept him in the box. You know, he's had a hard, strong, hard life, and football is, in the family of football, is what's buoyed him through his tough times, and he's had a lot of them. My, my kids, they, they love me. I love them to death, and they, they just look up to me, so I want to be a, a great example. So whatever decision I make, I know it's not going to just affect me, it's going to affect my kids. So I have to think not twice, but three times before I make the decision, because I'm not just playing for me, I'm playing for, for them and to have a better future for them to see, like, look, your dad did this, where he came from, he came from this country, and he came this far, and look, where he, look how far he ended up, uh, ended up going, you know, the sky's the limit.